Assalamu alaikum everyone, Yvonne here from My Halal Kitchen. And as promised, uh, we are doing a spontaneous uh, interview for good reason today with Executive Director of Zakat Foundation of America, Halil Demir. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Halil. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you for having me. May Allah bless you. Thank you. So the reason we are coming to talk today was uh, a pressing one, and that's the situation of the fires in Turkey. Um, now, I've wanted to talk to you about Zakat Foundation for a long time, to do an overview. We never got to it. Um, and for people who don't know, Zakat Foundation of America is based in Chicago, Illinois, and it's a very a wonderful not a humanitarian organization doing work all around the world to help so many people. I've known your brother Halil for 20 years and more than 20 years, I think it's now. When you first started, I think we met in the first or second year that you started Zakat Foundation. When you were in school, where we have a program with the, with the kids at school, remember? Yes, yes. I, I had just gotten out of grad school in international development and I was coming to you and I was so excited because there was a, a Muslim nonprofit humanitarian organization in my backyard and you were doing amazing things then, but you were just starting and you've since, mashallah, you and your family have grown this into an amazing organization. This is um, our 20 years, by the way. What? Oh, yeah, I saw it on your website. Yeah, Zakat Foundation a website, 20 years of humanitarian. Anniversary, yes. Yes, congratulations. That is, that is, I mean, we have so much to talk about and we're going to do an interview again another time, inshallah, when you have more time because you're a very busy guy. Um, we're going to talk about all the other projects that you have going on. But the reason I reached out to you and you so kindly agreed and accepted to speak with me so quickly was because of the situation happening in Turkey. A lot of us are tuned into the wildfires that are raging throughout the country and i just want to get your take on what's happening what's needed and what is that Cat foundation doing to help and how can we help so can you get us started on basic information first you know um, i will first ask um, weaver and our friends that please open your hand whatever religion you believe you are muslim jew christian or any other faith so please make prayers for those who are challenged and threatened by the fire. That's the first things we all have to do. Uh, when we talk about the fire, we really talking about the burning the heart of, of uh, people of Turkey. Yes. It's not the one that is, is the trees are burning, but burning the hearts. And also I will get the attention of, of viewer that these some of these forces are thousands, thousands of years these trees been around. Okay. It's not not like uh, we are not talking about a uh, um, couple couple hundred years of, of trees. These forests that are burning are uh, not only part of part of ecology, but a part of the existence of the people that living in 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 these for thousands of years actually. So civilization passed through. Civilization, we're talking about the Hittites, we talk about the Greeks, we talk about the Romans, Ashurians, we talk about the Persians, we talk about the Muslims, we talk about the Christians. And this is the civilization that actually burned in front of our eyes. So it's not an ordinary fire that is just burning and going through, unfortunately. That's a very soulful response. And I think many people watching love Turkey. Maybe they've visited Turkey, they've been a tourist, or they've you know, people's, Turkey is in people's hearts as it is in mine. And I feel like with the COVID situation happening, the lack of tourism, um, people are struggling. And now this is one more blow on top of all the other issues that's happening. And the fires are, seem to be in most of the tourist areas, most of the coastal areas. When I hear where they're raging, I, I, I picture the areas I've I've been to the beaches. I've I've seen the natural beauty. It's like no other in the world, and it's heartbreaking to see that they're just so intense, and they're having trouble knocking them out. This is seven days, right. and 154 different location fires. Oh. Just imagine 154, and just imagine. 
all these are treasure of a country and is burning. Also, uh, that until now, government was able or people were able to to uh, to handle most of them. Uh, ten of them still ongoing. One of them is almost there. So nine of them still strong and and uh, uh, very active and dangerous. And what is sad, Sister Yvonne, what is sad that 90% of this fire, unfortunately, caused by human being. 90% of them, according to records, caused by human being. And uh, uh, look like uh, the human being is the probably most destructive creature on earth, uh, destroying everything that comes along. And uh, the, the ecological disaster that we're facing is really threatening the existence of these this blue world, is existence of, of humanity if you continue going. So 90% of the fire that threatening the life of the millions of people in every aspect of life we are talking about. So Turkish government doing its best, but the organization such as the Cat Foundation, it's uh, our responsibility to respond because you cannot really expect that government can cover every aspect of a disaster. So that's where Zakat Foundation comes in. We have uh, we have a partner with the uh, Red Crescent of Turkey. Uh, we have a communication. We are already partnered with them and uh, try to respond as much as we can in different location and hoping that, you know, uh, since the Turks has been, or Turkey has been uh, one of the main destinations of the refugees in different parts of the world. So we are talking about the Syrians, we are talking about Iraqis, we are talking about the Muslim, we're talking about the Yazidis, we are talking about, you know, the, the right now the Afghanis, in fact, refugees are, are coming. So this is, this is a society that welcoming so many refugees and threatening by this danger and fire, it is our duty uh, you know, to, to do our best to actually help uh, as much as we can. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, everybody that we uh, view in these and uh, maybe by, by donating only a bottle of water, because some of these people now removed, the cities are, are forced to, to evacuate uh, from the locations. And these people don't have anything. And most places there is no electricity, there is no refrigerator. So we have to we have to bring water and food uh, for for these people, and I think you know duty of everyone to do their best to support this effort, to be there, to show solidarity. Start with their prayers. I mean, so the resources are, are stretched. People, uh, well, from the reports I've read, um, a lot of the villagers are suffering the most. Uh, the ones with livestock and animals that they've lost in the fire. So essentially, they've lost the livestock animals and and possibly their livelihood many of them their homes it's intensely hot right now the wind is blowing in many of these places so the fires keep spreading yep. the resources are just so stretched hospitals think, are full excuse and me of, hospitals are full as well oh yeah i didn't hear that part really so that's a lot of injured people right uh, who are dead and a lot of injured people and the hospitals treating so it is uh, resources are, as you said, very thin stretch because mm -hmm. it's not only one aspect you, can, you have to respond to it, but it's a multi. Exactly. Even in even in the United States, when the California or Oregon uh, fires were raging, they're still having a hard time to contain uh, those with with a multitude of resources. So I can't imagine. You know, it just seems like Turkey was hit one after the other, after the other, after the other, and it's not just rumor that you know humans have started some of this there's actually i i've watched videos of, of them finding evidence of of people you know throwing things into the bush that started the fire so it's just they're not just fighting nature they're fighting trying to figure out who's doing what and trying to stop that so it just seems like an insurmountable amount of stress on the firefighters the police the, the civilians so what so when people donate to Zakat Foundation, what are they actually giving other than water or food? What other help is, is on the ground to, to kind of alleviate some of the stress or the, 
uh, casualty or the you know harm that people are experiencing? This, you know, um, uh, you you counted a few of them, and I added that injured people. At the moment, uh, you know, Turkish government. Um, I mean, we are also talking to, to the government um, offices. Uh, different places, you know, what, what what the need is basically. But we were told that if we can respond basically with the food and water, will be because it's hot, so they don't need uh, any cover or blanket or anything else. Yeah. Even when they sleep outside, they will be okay. Uh, but um, uh, bringing them food and bringing them bring them water, and then some some places that we asked also. Uh, some some medical supplies may, might be also necessary. Uh, my colleagues are looking. Our volunteers are, are are standing by also at that too. But as of now, we were only asked actually bring and um, uh, stay in dialogue with the with the locations where they can ask us or call us so we can provide services actually. So. And how are you doing it when the fires are in so many different places? I mean, Bodrum and the. Uh, northwest of the Aegean and then all the way you know to Antalya and it's just if people don't know the geography of Turkey it's like it's like north to south and 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 spreading east it's crazy it's crazy it's the amount of places that they're happening and 154 location so you can imagine so so wow. you know this is this and is 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 very i mean it's it's, it's a large areas and it's very far from each other yeah. even though they have helicopters that non-stop right. carry the water even though they have a planes that no non-stop uh, you know carrying the water but eventually it doesn't matter how many you have we're talking about uh, thousands of of kilometers of land exactly. it's you know it's not like you are take uh, moving from here to downtown chicago which exactly. takes half an hour but it is if this takes hours and hours you yes. know, for the fire department to reach some of the locations, yes. and then the geography itself is not all 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 the flat land that you can you know drive. Yes. Exactly, it's, a, it's, it's a very very challenging moment. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. and then we have to pray for these people and do our best at this show solidarity that we are going to do and that's what the zakat foundation does you know go to our website and we will update regularly and also you can call uh, call us to get that more update information zakat.org is is there and uh easy to to donate uh, if if you cannot just donate one or two water if you can please donate for 100 families food food packages that we can distribute and that will be that will be really appreciated because as i said uh, not only Turkish government, but I'm talking about just my experience last um, 10 years with the Syrian refugees. Uh, before that, the Iraqi refugees. Uh, whenever there is a refugee camps, you know, when we buy the food, the Turks generously donated. And God is my witness. I'm not saying this to, to, to say anything. We are buying 10 truck of pot potatoes to distribute for the for the for the refugees each time this farmer when we buy they they give us at least one or two truck full wow. um, potatoes when wow. we buy 500 winter jackets my my friend tells me hey look like you know the blessings of god was in it we have 550 jackets Mash. And you know, those who produce and give it to us. So these are, I'm talking about ordinary people, like, people like you and I, who take care of refugees, share their food, share their, 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 their water, share their homes with these people. And these people are in, now in need. And I think, you know, it is only, only fair. It is our duty that we show at least that we are there for them as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, when one part of the Ummah suffers, the whole Ummah suffers. And I think people are really feeling that watching the news and just paralyzed with, like, what do you do? And what I noticed in watching the news is that, subhanAllah, the Turkish people are so resilient and they really come together in a time of crisis. I've seen, you know, stories of people just kind of, you know, watching and being on guard to make sure that nobody's doing anything mischievous to, to start more fires you know people are leaving their businesses to go and help there's there's just it it's it's a difficult time but they are stepping in so much and the least we can do is give a little more i think that what people don't realize too about the fires is that when i was living in turkey i noticed the helicopters 
coming uh, overhead when there were small fires in areas of, you know, not too far from me, but they can only take buckets of water. It's like, exactly. it's, they can only take so much in one trip. It doesn't put a dent in anything. No. And that's just how it is here too. Yep. You know, it, it's just impossible to alleviate, you know, so quickly. So no. this is an ongoing thing. And I think the people are really going to need our help for quite some time. And even when all the fires are out, people are still without homes, no. without businesses. And, you know, how easily do you rebuild those things? I think also wind plays a role, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not in a favor. Yeah. Uh, seemed to me, you know, wind has, has played also a serious role that uh, uh, expanding the fire and the destruction. Yeah. So you are right, um, since these this cities are already, you know, um, villages are moved. And sometimes when we say, you know, about a fire or disaster, we imagine only human being. But also the animals goes. When you are a farmer, when you have the five cows, you know, when yeah. your cows are gone, actually your livelihood is gone. That is where you you, yes. you actually take your care of yeah. your families, right? So this yeah. is gone. when you have you have fifty sheep that are you know um, they are burned or 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 or, or, or uh, destroyed. We are talking about the livelihood of whole village actually, because that is what they make living out of it, right? And this is right now what's threatening. And my may may God God bless them and help them. Uh, so I'm hoping that you know. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters here who are listening to these will open their hearts and really support these people. Turkey is a, you know, has been is a beautiful place to visit. I'm hoping that help them to rebuild places that we visit, places that we love to see, places that we used to it. You know, you've been there, you live there, you yeah. see the natural beauty of it. It's going to be very difficult, you know, imagine for you these these beautiful mountains suddenly don't have trees and yeah. the soil is like you know naked. Uh, and, and it's not going to, it's very difficult to imagine. So I'm hoping that you know, we can I mean, build all this again. Hundreds of years for those forests to grow and all of a sudden they're gone. And, you know, people aren't going to see pictures of the livestock that are gone. You know, they're not going to get the graphic images and, you know, of course, but they have to realize that that is part of these fires, you know, like all of that amazing wildlife that's there that's i think that's the draw for a lot of people to go to turkey that it's still very agricultural people it, it when you visit some of the villages it's like stepping back in time i know that's one of the things i fell in love with was feeling that slower pace of life and still seeing shepherds with their sheep and you know it, it's just not something you see every day and so i'm thinking about those people who lost all of that so when you are passing through a, through a village, and the owner, that's how my mom used to used to used to make sure that we give uh, figs to to pa passerbys. Yeah. Let's say you know passerbys when they get figs, you get blessings. Your fig gets oh. <laughs> increases. Right? So make sure yeah. you offer everyone, and that's the culture. Yes. You know, listen yes. to the people when you're passing through. They yeah. want to grapes, taste their grapes or their, yes. their yes. That's you know figs and, and apricots and so right. Yeah, I've had the grapes and the apricots, as you mentioned. Yeah, just walking by and people, you know, that, there's something so special about Turkey. I think everyone watching will agree. I think uh, anytime I would, you know, post anything about Turkey, it seems like no matter where people are from in the world, Muslim or not, everybody has a story. Either they want to go or they've been and they, you know, they felt that their heart was there still. And so this, this, tragedy is really hitting home for a lot of people. I think it's it's just very sad and a lot of people just don't know how to help. So it's very helpful to hear what you're doing and how the donations can help, you know, alleviate some of that pain, uh, you know, logistically, you know, we can sort of alleviate some of the, the, uh, the, the immediate needs. But I think this is also gonna be a very ongoing uh, project for yeah, for a while actually yeah. you know, to build yeah. all these was inshallah you know I have to say the um, having Turkey having people you know friends like you really makes also Turks um, very proud that you know to be a, a welcoming nation 
and making that many friends all around the world, right? Yeah. So, you know, people are coming and, and, and seeing that Turkey, I get so many phone calls being from Turkey that, you know, everybody asking what they, what they can do actually. And just thinking, you know, this is what makes you proud, you know, that shows yeah. welcoming nation that, you know, nation that, that uh, open its arms, share its, its wealth of experience, wealth of culture, wealth of, you know, the beauty, the art, the um, one things that you 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 will know better than anyone else the food culture. And you are from one of the. Best, I've not been, but you you are from the famous food city of. You want to tell everybody? <laughs> yes, I'm from Urfa and Gaziantep. That is the region where all almost uh, most of the Turkish you know Turkey's food comes from. Yes. Very wealthy. And when you are there, please visit this, this region. You will see I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> you will see, you know, from beautiful pistachio trees to fig trees yeah. and everything else. You will see where Abraham lived. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and everything else the historically. So it's, it's an old Mesopotamia, right? It's 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 very interesting place and also a very wealthy food culture that you will you will enjoy. So definitely, that you will be your next destination, inshallah. That you will be. Inshallah, there are plans for that. So you know, I heard there's a pistachio museum in Gaziantep. That's yes, they open it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that that's that's for another conversation. But um, but yeah, I it just it just it just goes to show that there's so much richness in Turkey that you know we we don't want to lose ever and. No. We want to help as much as possible to get please do that. back on their feet. And I ask them, please, you know, the viewer, please, by by, you know, by any means, if you 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 should support uh, support this effort of ours, yeah. we help. And you know, you as I said, you know, zakat.org is very simple. Z a k a t dot o r g zakat.org, yeah. and you can also reach us on the phone or emails. And uh, you have any question? Also, when you are traveling to Turkey, and so you know, we our office in Turkey is very active. Our programs and our projects in Turkey are very active. So you are always welcome visit to you know uh, our our uh, our office as well as our projects. But uh, at the moment, please, I ask you support our effort so we can bring some relief to a relief to the people of Turkey that need our help. And Sissi Yvonne, thank you so much for making making time for us, opening no, your platform. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The honor is mine that you, you know, so quickly agreed to come on and talk to us. I think it's very special. I know you're a very busy person and you have a lot of work to do. So I'll just leave uh, the conversation with uh, telling everybody that there are links in the comment section where you can uh, donate directly to the Turkey Emergency Relief. But I'll also have a fundraiser going on on my Facebook page, my Halal Kitchen Facebook page. And then I'll just be continuing to uh, provide updates whenever I can and we'll be in touch and hopefully inshallah we'll, we'll have, we'll make some progress. So thank, thank you. you. Th yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, my sister. That's yeah. Thank you inshallah. so much. See you here soon inshallah in Chicago again, okay? Right? Inshallah, yeah. Well, we'll see. I plant turkey first. Yes, 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 of course. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> Take All right. Care, Take care. Say salam to the family. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam.